Thank you.
Ronaldo. Thank <laughs> you. 
people to stand up and we can choose to get away. Okay, I I know, I know, I know.
Show on the road. We can sit or? Um, well, we're going to ask. What are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> Be seated until we're going to do the opening of. Yeah. So, good morning. I'm Kent Devereaux, president of Goucher College, and I'd like to welcome you to the 131st commencement. Please welcome 2022 graduate Grace Kelly, who will sing our national anthem, and please remain standing afterwards for the invocation by Rabbi Josh Schneider. Please stand. <laughs> Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled better yet wave or the Class of 2022, welcome to this moment, your commencement from Goucher College. As soon to be graduates, each of you know that you have an obligation to make a positive impact and you've gained many of the tools to do so. In social justice work, an oft quoted phrase is the charge in Leviticus 1620, justice, justice you shall pursue. The early rabbis focus on the repetition of the word justice why does it say justice, justice you shall pursue? Why not simply justice you shall pursue? The 12th century sage Abraham Ibn Ezra said the following, Moses repeats the word justice to indicate that one should pursue justice whether one gains or one loses. Such a commitment is embodied by our speaker today, the courageous Reverend William Barber, from whom we'll hear later on. May each of you have the patience, compassion, and kindness to pursue justice win or lose in ways large and small, even and especially when things are hard. May you be blessed and kept from all harm. May you find goodness and grace on all the paths you face, and may your striving for purpose endow you with a sense of peace. You can be seated. So good morning to our distinguished guest, Reverend Dr. William J. Barber II. Our alumna, Evelyn Dyke Schrodel, assembled faculty, staff, trustees, parents, friends, and family members, and most of all to the students of Goucher College's class of 2022. Welcome to this year's commencement ceremony. We are so glad to come together at last and celebrate your accomplishments this year. So I want to acknowledge first, as we gather today on our beautiful campus for this most joyous occasion, the Piscataway people whose land was seized by European colonists in the 17th century, the enslaved people who lived and worked on this very land in the 18th and 19th centuries, the extent to which we're only now coming to fully comprehend. Land that Goucher College bought and built upon in the early 20th century, where we now gather today in the 21st century to celebrate this commencement. As I look out on this remarkably diverse Goucher community assembled here today, I can't help but to reflect 
on how far our nation has come in my lifetime alone, yet recognize, considering the horrific acts of racism, anti-Semitism, and xenophobia we've witnessed these past few weeks, just how fragile those gains are and how much work still lies ahead to ensure that the original vision of John Franklin Goucher and Mary Fisher to provide a high quality liberal arts education to those who had been denied that opportunity in the past is fully realized. Today, the value of a liberal arts education and the pursuit of critical inquiry as a foundational element of a liberal democracy is clearer than ever. A liberal arts education remains a bulwark against the onslaught of disinformation campaigns, special military operations, alternative facts, and other Orwellian machinations. As the biblical citation incorporated into the Goucher College seal says, from Thessalonians 1, chapter 5, verse 21, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Our graduates today hail from 31 states and almost as many different countries. Several students today graduating are from our Goucher Prison Education Partnership. And while some grew up... <laughs> and so, while some of our students grew up clo so close to our campus that they could literally walk to classes, others have traveled from far and wide to pursue their education here at Goucher. From Vietnam, China, Malaysia, Cote d'Ivoire, Greece, Ecuador, Israel, Palestine, and many others. And to the parents of our graduating class, let me just address this question. I know you're all thinking, yes, your child will get a job. <laughs> Actually, with the current un unemployment rate at 3.8%, the lowest level in 50 years, your child is graduating into the strongest job market in years. So they'll get a job. However, as a parent myself, I understand how you feel. Will they get a good job, a meaningful job, a job that will bring them happiness as well as a paycheck, and a paycheck large enough so they won't be moving back home or asking you to Venmo them money? <laughs> that kind of job. Well, in fact, if history is any indication, as a Goucher College graduate, your son or daughter will go on to do some amazing things. They are likely to hold as many as 11 different jobs in their lifetime, with the average tenure in each job less than five years. And while half of those jobs have yet to be invented, one thing is sure, change is a constant and Goucher grads are resilient change agents prepared for this world. Finally, for our graduates, both undergrads and grads today, I have a story I wanna share with all of you. One short story, one lesson that I hope you will remember. My wife and I have one son, now in his 30s, living in New York City. But when he was growing up, we lived in Chicago, the town of Evanston, actually. Both my wife and I worked full time, so all through elementary school, our son spent his afternoons in daycare at the local YMCA. And every month, I would walk upstairs to a tiny little office, no larger than a closet, in this old Gothic architecture building, where a young woman in her 20s sat behind a beat-up old desk and made out a receipt for our monthly childcare payment. From time to time, we'd engage in idle chit-chat, nervous conversation. I'd ask how things were going. It was her first job out of college, and she struggled to break into the Chicago theater and comedy scene. Years later, when we were moving, my wife and I came across one of those receipts she had written out years before. And we finally learned her name, Tina Fey. <laughs> the lesson, everyone has a first job. It doesn't define you. It's what you do next in life that matters. And so, class of 2022, you've been through a lot these last four years. And if we can get through today without a major deluge, that will be amazing. <laughs> I figure if we've got a pastor, a minister, and a rabbi on stage, our odds are pretty good. <laughs> class, you've Persevered, persevered through it all to this day. It's what you do next in life that really matters. As a society, we need your enthusiasm, your creativity, your intellect, and yes, your compassion to create the world that we all want to live in. The challenges are great, but so are the rewards. And after all, when has a challenge ever deterred a Goucher grad? Be a change maker, be a gopher. So let's get this commencement ceremony underway, shall we? <laughs> Thank you.
It is my pleasure to introduce our 2022 student speaker, Omo Shesan Adebambe, <laughs> who's a business manager, major, a campus leader. Shesan has worked as a residential assistant since his sophomore year, and during his time here at Goucher, Shazan was a member of the COVID-19 Task Force, an arch presidential diplomat, and a member of the Goucher men's tennis team who brought home the Landmark Conference Championship this year. <laughs> Shazan is originally from Philadelphia, where he has lived with his mother and father, plus his two younger brothers. And after Goucher, Shazan plans to move back to Philly to work at a local nonprofit while continuing to pursue his education and earning his MBA from the American University. Please join me in welcoming Shazan. Good morning. Before I begin my formal speech, I'd like to pay my respects to the formerly enslaved men, women, and children who once lived on these lands that we now know as Goucher College. Ashe. Now, I'd like to thank President Devereaux, his cabinet, the Board of Trustees, faculty and staff, alumni and alumni, distinguished guests, and as well as, well as all of those involved in the planning of today's momentous occasion for allowing me the opportunity to speak at this year's commencement ceremony. Additionally, I'd like to thank my beloved friends and family who all cannot be in attendance today. But without their love and support, I would not be standing here in front of you today. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. When I was applying to colleges my senior year of high school, Goucher wasn't my first choice. It wasn't my second choice, or for that fact, my third choice either. <laughs> but it was the right choice. I committed to Goucher in order to further my education and join the men's tennis team. The former men's tennis coach left days after my graduation, leaving my doubles partner and I unsure of our next steps. For the majority of my first semester, we had no full-time head coach, only interims here and there. For some time, I contemplated transferring to another school. Yet, I stayed at Goucher to remain close to the people I met here. Even for those of us who live on campus, it isn't many official dining hall, the Athenaeum, or the dorms that make Goucher feel like home. It's the people you walk down Bermuda Highway with, sit next to in the classroom, and eat in the dining hall with. Our memories will last a lifetime, and we will share our stories for many years to come. The human race has faced much hardship over the past four years. We endured an insurrection in our nation's capital, the rise of climate change issues, the unjust killing of black and brown people, and the coronavirus. What we thought initially would be two weeks of spring break led to months of quarantining, and for many of us, the loss of several loved ones as well. We had to pack up in the middle of the year and shift to Zoom University in a matter of days. How we physically distance ourselves from one another has had a heavy toll on social dynamics. We utilized our technological resources to continue pursuing our degrees. Likewise, we didn't let distance ruin our friendships because we organized group FaceTime calls, made connections, playing games like Among Us online. We marched in solidarity and protested in support of Black Lives Matter, LGBTQ plus rights, and Palestinian rights as well. At the beginning of the pandemic, there was so much that we needed to learn before making our safe return to campus last semester possible. After being robbed of a year and a half of our college experiences, it was truly refreshing to see our friends and family again and reconnect in person for the first time. Class 2022, I believe there will never be a class as resilient as ours. We have only scratched the surface of what we yet to accomplish. Obstacles were continuously thrown in our path, but we kept overcoming them. No one knows what the future has in store for us, but I know this class that stands before me today will go on to make a difference in this world. Congratulations, class of 2022. You can endure what no other class has ever had to. The sky's the limit. Let's go get it. Thank you. Today, we have one of the largest graduating classes from our graduates in our graduate school in a number of majors. So it's only right, today's Welch Center student speaker is Jenny Lares. Jenny is a spoken word poet and arts administrator who most recently collaborated on an original music concept album. 
She was born in the Philippines, raised in Northeastern Maryland, received her BA from the University of Maryland, and will be receiving her MA in Arts Administration from Goucher College today. Please join me in welcoming Jenny to the podium. Thank you, President Devereaux. To my fellow graduate students and undergraduates, congratulations. We are all here today because of the support, encouragement, and patience of a number of people in our lives, be they partners, parents, children, siblings, friends, aunts and uncles, even neighbors, and especially faculty members and staff who believed in our vision for ourselves and for our field. I am eternally grateful to the staff of the Welsh Center for Graduate and Professional Studies for their trust over the past three years. I have enjoyed my time as their graduate assistant, and I will miss each of them terribly. I am also here because my parents believed that emigrating to the United States from the Philippines would secure my future. They had no idea that their youngest child would become a poet and arts administrator the opposite of what they're expecting or, or <laughs> considered to be a stable career. Although I think there's a nurse me or a doctor me somewhere in a parallel universe. <laughs> My parents believed in the American dream as much as I critique the idea. It is never lost on me, the contradiction that I embody. I am also here because of a trail of Asian American poets and artists who taught me how to speak and to take up space. Without them, it would have taken longer for me to realize the power of my own voice. Without them, I may still be apologizing for my existence. We are here because a community of people cared for us and because the generations who came before laid down tracks so we could glide. This moment is as much about them as it is about us. So for the next few moments, I invite you to bring them into this space, whether they are next to you, a few rows back, in another state, or another country, or have since passed but are very much with you in spirit. I know you all join me when I say, thank you. We stand taller because you came before us. We are stronger because you showed us it was possible. When I started the Arts Administration program, I was trying to find my way back to the arts after an extended detour. So many of us who chose to pursue a graduate degree have a similar story, looking for a career change, to work in and contribute to a field that is meaningful to us, and at least for me, makes me feel alive. Since the start of the pandemic, we have witnessed how powerful the arts can be to heal, to unite, to give name to injustice, to imagine new ways of being and connecting. But the arts can also be exclusive, inaccessible, unwelcoming. As part of this generation of arts administrators and creatives, we play a critical role in whose story gets told, whose experience is normalized, and where resources and money are funneled. Creating a more equitable, more joyful field is not an easy task, but we are ready for it. No matter what field you're in, whether you're an educator, an artist, a storyteller, a culture bearer, a historian, a researcher, a collaborator, an advisor, now is the time for us to reimagine and enact a different way of living and working. As this chapter of our lives comes to a close, I want to end by sharing one of my favorite excerpts from a poem by Vietnamese American poet and writer Bao Phi. When people cover their ears at you, you live your life out loud. When it feels like no one lets you live at your own volume, you sing. Thank you and congratulations again to my fellow graduates. Uh, 
the, the honorary degrees will now be um, conferred. Evelyn Dyke Schrodel, 62, will be presented by Lisa Stromberg, Chair of the Board of Trustees. Mike's not on? There you go. Okay. Baltimore native Evelyn Dyke Schrodel has been an active member of the Goucher community for nearly seven decades. Her relationship with the college did not begin as a traditional student. When Evelyn graduated from Forest Park High School in 1935, her family couldn't afford college, college tuition for her, so she began working at a department store downtown during the day and taking non-credit courses at night. She loved learning and studied a variety of subjects. Mm -hmm. After marrying Erwin Schrodel Jr. in 1939, she became a homemaker for the next decade until her husband lost his job and she went back to work. Her career at Goucher began in 1949 when she was hired as an assistant in the registrar's office, which at that time was located in downtown Baltimore. Evelyn soon learned that she could audit classes so she began taking classes right away. Eventually, she was able to earn college credit as an adult learner. In addition to her work in the registrar's office, she worked as an associate director of admissions where she conducted interviews with students and found that she really loved writing. Over an 11 year period as a full-time employee and a part-time adult student, Evelyn earned a Bachelor of Arts in English and membership in Phi Beta Kappa. Her love of learning and her interest in people had found a home at Goucher. Evelyn's time at Goucher was marked by many events, the civil rights struggle, the assassinations of President Kennedy and his brother Robert Kennedy, and the completion of this new campus in Towson. When she retired in 1981, after 32 years, she retired as Goucher's registrar. Over the years, she has generously supported Goucher students and programs through the Evelyn Dyke Schrodel Class of 1962 Endowed Scholarship Fund, which helps deserving students who, for whom an undergraduate de degree from a private liberal arts college would be unattainable without financial support. To celebrate her and her husband's love of art, she also established the Erwin C. Schrodel Jr. Lecture in Decorative Arts and Material Culture to help bring prominent artists to Goucher's campus. At 104 years old, Evelyn remains an avid artist and tennis enthusiast. She shares her love of the game with future generations of gophers through her most recent gift, the Evelyn Dyke Schroedl Class of 1962 Tennis Center. In recognition of your enduring legacy as a Goucher community member for more than 70 years, as a tireless giver who has helped numerous students pay for college, and who has made it possible to bring prominent voices to campus. As a dedicated tennis player who gifted Goucher College a prestigious center for the game. As an alumna who has enriched Goucher's cultural, academic, and athletic offerings, and by demonstrating the value of a Goucher education has served as an inspiration to us all. The trustees and faculty of Goucher College are proud to confer upon Evelyn Dyke Schrodel the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters Honoris Cosa. Mr. President, it is with great admiration and respect that I present Evelyn Dyke Schrodel for the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Cosa. I'll hold this. There you go. Take a photo. Okay. They want to take a photo. Okay. Hold there. Hold there. Do you want to say a few words? No, not here. Okay. I mean, I will say it. No, it's up to you. Now? It's up to you. Okay. 
Is this, this the only time I have to speak? You don't have to, if you'd like I to. I would like to. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I would like to uh, offer my congratulations to the people here today who have earned the Bachelor of Arts degree from Gelser. Uh, I know that many of you will go on for, to earn higher degrees, but believe me, this Bachelor of Arts degree and becoming an alumnus of Gallagher College will be one of the best things that you've ever done. Uh, can I keep doing it? Okay. okay. Now, uh, President Deborah has told me that I should say, keep my remarks brief, and I will. But I, <laughs> I would like to uh, use my many years of experience to offer some advice. I say I'm, I can offer advice these days. Uh, when I was very young, my older sister, Mildred Dyke Atkinson, uh, asked me to memorize a, f a, a verse from the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam, an 11th century uh, poem. And this is it. Have to think. <laughs> uh, 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 I'm I'm lost. Okay, but anyway, it's the fifty-first verse. So look it up. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, fifty-first verse. Okay. Okay. That's that's all I have to say except this. Uh, be proud of everything you do, but also enjoy life. Uh, your life is the greatest gift you've ever been given or ever will be given. And it's up to you to use it wisely, but to enjoy it. the degree of Doctor of Divinity will now be conferred. The Reverend Dr. William J. Barber II will be presented by Ann Duncan, Dr. Ann Duncan. The Reverend Dr. William J. Barber II is President and Senior Lecturer of Repairers of the Breach, Co-Chair of the Poor People's Campaign, a National Call for Moral Revival, Bishop with the Fellowship of Affirming Ministries, visiting professor at Union Theological Seminary and senior fellow at Auburn, Auburn Seminary. He has been pastor of Greenleaf Christian Church, Disciples of Christ in Goldsboro, North Carolina for the past 29 years. The church sponsors efforts that have led to over $12 million of community development. Reverend Dr. Barber has authored four books and is also architect of the moral movement, begun in 2013, revived under the banner of the Poor People's Campaign. In 2018, Reverend Dr. Barber helped relaunch the Poor People's Campaign, which was begun by Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and many others in 1968. Reverend Dr. Barber has been arrested 17 times for nonviolent civil disobedience, Reverend Dr. Barber has given keynote addresses at hundreds of national and state conferences, including the 2016 Democratic National Convention and the homily at the 59th inaugural prayer service for President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. He spoke at the Vatican in 2017 at Pope Francis's encyclical Laudato Si on care for our common home and was invited again in 2021 to a conference hosted by the Pontifical Academy of Social Sciences. In 2018, he addressed the fifth 
UNI Global Union World Congress to more than 25 countries and was added to the Black Achievers Wall of, in the International Slavery Museum in Liverpool, England. He has 10 honorary degrees conferred upon him. Reverend Dr. Barber served as president of the North Carolina NAACP from 20, 2006 to 2017, and he served on the National NAACP Board of Directors from 2008 to 2020. A former Mel King Fellow at MIT, he was named one of BET's 100 enter Entertainers and Innovators in 2020 as a 2019 recipient of the North Carolina Award and received the MacArthur Foundation Genius Award, the Franklin D. Roosevelt for Freedoms Award, the Martin Luther King Jr. Center's Beloved Community Award, and the Puffin Award. We are honored to have Reverend Dr. Barber with us today to give the 2022 commencement address. In recognition of your innumerable achievements as a moral leader who has written extensively on organizing injustice, who helped to relaunch the Poor People's Campaign, who has been bravely arrested many times for acts of nonviolent civil disobedience, and who as a religious leader has worked with great determination to inspire thousands and raise millions of dollars to help our communities improve the way society treats our most vulnerable and bring about equal protection under the law, the trustees and faculty of Goucher College are proud to confer upon the Reverend Dr. William Joseph Barber II, the degree of Doctor of Divinity, honoris causa. Mr. President, it is with great admiration and respect that I present Reverend Dr. William J. Barber II for the honorary degree of Doctor of Divinity, honoris causa. Before we do anything else, <clears throat> I come from a tradition where the elders among us and the youngest among us are to be given the highest honor. This dear sister who received this honorary degree, Evelyn, is 104 years old. I think she deserves a standing ovation bigger than we would give if the President of the United States were to be in here. Would we stand and give her? thank God for the privilege of being here today to President Devereaux, to the Dean of Students, Sister Johnson, to the Vice President and Dean of Students, Sister Camp, to those who have traveled with me today, William Hicks and James Whitted and Reverend Della Owens, to all of the faculty the Board of Trustees, parents, and students, to a sister who I met through her parents vicariously, Sister Enri, who will be graduating here today, Abdullah Enri. I want to thank God for the privilege of being here today. Rain is a sign in Africa of blessings. And in biblical traditions, it can be a sign of blessings and it can also be a sign of tears. And perhaps today we need both. Four years ago, when most of you arrived on this campus, you could not have known the challenges that you and the world would face during your time here and yet you've made it. 
You're here. You're still standing. And you're standing on the cusp of a new chapter in your life. No one needs to lecture this generation and this class about the real world. No, the realities of this old world have intruded upon your young lives over these past four years. And you are already painfully aware of the harsh realities that threaten to upend almost everything we hold dear. The truth is the real challenges of the now have quickly ended any trace of your childhood, your teen years, your young years. And you have been given the experience of tears, tragedy, and tribulation far beyond your numerical tender years. I'm a pastor now for more than 30 years, but I once sat where you sit some three decades ago, and I want to share with you a few thoughts on the resources that we have to meet this moment. I don't want to go around the moment. I don't want to bypass the moment. I'm not an optimist. I'm not a pessimist. I don't deal with happy. I'm a person of faith. So the language I use is hope and despair. And I also understand that hope does not go around despair. It must go through it. And somehow we must learn how to hew out of mountains of despair, despair, stones of hope. So I want to talk about our need for three things in these, these, these days that we are in. We need a collective cry. We need a clear call. And we need a consecrated commitment. In this moment, we need a collective cry in the churches where I grew up we sang a song that says, trouble in my way, I've got to cry sometimes. Whichever way you plan to go from here, trouble is not far ahead. It's already around us. You're going to have to cry sometimes. Maybe sooner than later, you've already had to cry. And I want to suggest to you that our collective tears are not really our burden, but in some ways, our tears have power. Not just the tears of per personal pain, but what I call prophetic tears. And why? Because prophetic tears provide the water that falls upon the soil of trouble and can produce a moral revival in your soul. It was the tears of the people of ancient Israel that caused God to send them a deliverer named Moses. That might never have never happened without a collective cry. It was the tears of Gethsemane by Jesus that empowered Jesus to deal with Calvary. It was the tears of slavery that gave rise to the abolition movement. It was the tears of Emmett Till's mama, Mamie, and the tears of those mourners and her forcing the nation to cry with her that led to the beginnings of the modern civil rights movement. And as a nation, we are having to cry a lot these days. A million Americans' deaths have broken untold American hearts. Hundreds of thousands were needless. COVID may be listed as the cause of death, but we just recently did a study, and it showed that many died of poverty, that the pandemic did not discriminate, but we did. They died of being labeled as essential, but treated as, as expendable died of being invisible because they were black and brown and indigenous and Asian and poor and white. And we cannot see this and not cry a collective cry. Even before the pandemic, there was a death measure for every piece of hard-hearted public policy. Before anyone ever heard of COVID-19, COVID put a spotlight on this nation's poor and low-wage workers and racism, but they were there before. And when we look at the reality that ever before there was COVID, in 2018, we did a study, an audit of America called the Souls of Poor Folk. 
And it revealed that there are 140 million poor and low wealth people in this country before COVID, 43% of this nation, 52% of our children living in poverty and low wealth, 73 million women. You cannot know these numbers and not cry sometimes. Before COVID ever hit, 400 people made an average of $97,000 an hour. Three people had more money than the bottom 50% of Americans combined. And yet at the same time, workers were getting arrested for simply standing and demanding $15 living wage. 52 million people in this country work hard every day for less than a living wage. Some make $7.25 an hour. We've not raised the minimum wage for 12 years. Some, like restaurant workers, only make $2.13 an hour plus tax. And yet, they were arrested while tax cuts were given to the already wealthy and sometimes greedy. You can't know these numbers and not cry sometimes. 87 million people before COVID ever hit were without health care or uninsured or underinsured in America. People who pray not to get sick because they can't afford the treatment. Forcing preachers and pastors like myself to preach sermons over people that should not be in caskets, that should not be dead or dying. The United States is the only of the 25 wealthiest countries in the world that does not offer some form of universal health care. And even in the midst of a pandemic, the majority of the politicians that sit in Washington, D.C. could not be moved to at least make sure people had health care. You can't see this and not cry sometimes. Before COVID ever hit, 700 people were dying a day from poverty, a quarter million people a year from poverty before COVID ever hit. And too many people in power have become too comfortable with other people's deaths. And I tell you, these are crying times. 21 weeks into this year, America has already seen 213 mass shootings. 213 mass shootings. The latest 19 elementary school students, 21, and two teachers were shot. Texas, white supremacists, Filled up with the hatred of the Great Replacements Theory, killed 10 human beings in Buffalo. Not random, but because of their skin color, because of their zip code, even because of their poverty, because in Buffalo, the reason everybody was in that one grocery store is because it's a food desert. It's a poor community. I traveled to Buffalo not long ago to stand with Starbucks workers and their families as 16 Starbucks shops in, up, up shops in upstate New York won union representation. It did my heart good, but it breaks my heart and it breaks yours that now black families in Buffalo and mostly Latino families in Texas mourn their loved ones snatched away by white supremacy or snatched away by hatred and rapid fire weapons and the absurd notion that somebody ought to be able to buy an assault weapon when the very name of the weapon tells you what it will be used for. Sometimes we have to cry. We have to cry when we have businesses that will fund certain TV stations where their commentator pushes the replacement theory suggest that black and brown voters are third world voters. But our most lethal problem isn't just vile racial rhetoric or even vicious racial violence. It is also policy violence. Policy violence is government policies that consistently create disparate outcomes for black people and brown people and white people and indigenous people and Asian people and mostly poor people. And in every regressive piece of public policy, there is a death measurement in every piece of it. Thousands of deaths annually are attributed to pollution from coal-fired power plants and poor communities and communities of color bearing the brunt, needless, unnatural death. 
We live in a society far too comfortable with unnecessary, unnatural death. When will America decide that death is no longer an option? This is why we must learn the power of a collective cry. The rabbi knows what I'm talking about because in times like these, it was Jeremiah that said in, the, in 2,600 years ago, all oh, that my head were a fountain of tears that I might cry on behalf of the nation. Go get the wailing women who know how to cry and break the heart of the nation so that the nation might change. One of the gifts we have is our collective tears. And somehow we've got to connect our tears and our pain to a mass movement that creates a flood of transformation. Our collective tears that says when we refuse to be, we will refuse to be comforted. We will not go back to normal. We will not just accept things as they are. We have to mourn because blessed are they that mourn. Blessed are they that care so much they will not accept things as they are. In the fifth chapter of Amos, God told the prophet in the 15th verse, I need some people who know how to cry. I need some people who know how to cry loud and who hate evil and love good. I need some people that go, know how to go in the public square. The Bible says in that same verse, I need a remnant, a remnant that will grow into the streets and lament loudly and fill the malls and the shops with the cries of doom and weep and say, not me, not us, not now, not on our watch. And Amos, God said to Amos, and when I hear that collective cry, I will come and help you. And then and only then will justice roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. I want to suggest to this class, don't hide your tears. Cry your tears until we break the heart of this nation enough that it wants a new heart and a new consciousness and a new moral reset. We have to understand that we've got to unite our tears because the same political extremism that would seek to give a rapist more power over a woman's body than the woman are the same extremists that deny health care, the same ones that deny voting rights, the same ones that deny living wages, the same ones that block fixing the problems with our climate. And somewhere we must say, if they are cynical enough to be together, we're going to be smart enough to come together. The greatest, the greatest danger right now is for people to just cry for a moment and then go to the next commercial. The greatest trouble we can have right now is to have crying and then we put it up or we just cry in our silos. We only cry over our issue. The truth of the matter is we need a collective cry, and that's why on June 18th, Saturday, in Washington, D.C., on Pennsylvania Avenue at 930, we are calling for a mass poor people's low-wage workers assembly and moral march on Washington and to the polls where we will cry prophetic tears together, where we will put a face on the pain and the tears of this nation, and where we will call for a new moral reset and a third reconstruction agenda and for poor people and their advocates and religious leaders to come together and create a mighty flood of transformation. But not only do we need a clear cry, a, excuse me, a collective cry, we need a clear call. Do you know all of this pain is calling you? I mean, I ask, why are you still breathing? There are people that died that they weren't any worse than you. They weren't any worse than me. I wrestled with that question for a while. As a pastor, I had one family that lost 12 members of that family and another family that lost 25 members in a 30-mile radius that are a part of the Poor People's Campaign. And I went into a kind of struggle about that. Why am I still here, Lord? Why? I've been around COVID, I know. And over in the night, the Spirit said, that is never a question you can answer. Why are you still here? Because all of us, from the moment we were born, we faced the possibility of not being. 
we face the threat of non-being. So the question is not, why are you here? The question is, what are you going to do since you're still here? What are you going to do with the breath you have? Because if we've learned anything through COVID, breath is a terribly important thing. And most of us only have six minutes of it. If any of us lost breath for six minutes, most of us would be out of here. So the question is, what are you going to do with your six minutes, your six hours, your six days, your six weeks, your six months, your six years, or your 60 years? I want to suggest that right now you and I are being called to recognize breath is too precious to waste on lying. Breath is too precious to waste on hating. Breath is too precious to waste on racism. If I'm going to breathe, let's join our breath and breathe some love and breathe some mercy and breathe some grace into this society. <laughs> next week, next Sunday, is Pentecost. And on Pentecost in the book of Acts, Peter, under the Holy Spirit, said to the people, save yourselves. There is a clear call on this generation and all of us who are alive to say to this nation, save yourself. Save yourself. Save yourself from greed. Save yourself from this fetish with guns and the bloodthirstiness of the NRA. Save yourself from the forces that would rather destroy the earth than take seriously the threat of climate change. Save yourself from those who would rather build bombs and weapons to destroy life rather than heal people, save yourself. And if you study history, the question is always in every moment, how will we respond? What will we do with the call that's on our lives right now? And a clear call can change your whole life. Sometimes in the midst of pain, you find out who you really are supposed to be. And what you're really supposed to do, it was in the midst of racial pain that Langston Hughes understood he, what kind of poet he, poetry he was supposed to write. It was right in the middle of some of the worst racial days that Langston Hughes wrote a poem called America Has Never Been America to Be, But I Swear This Oh That America Shall Be. We Must Bring Our Mighty Dream Back Again. Sure, call me any ugly name you choose, but the steel of freedom does not stain. For those who live like leeches on the people's lives, we must take back our land again. America, oh yes, I say it plain. America was never a me, America to me, but I swear this oath. He didn't write like that outside of pain. He found his calling in the midst of pain. Fannie Lou Hamer learned how to sing in the midst of pain. That's where this little light of mine I'm going to let it shine. It didn't come when everything was fine. It came after she was beaten and brutalized and almost killed. And Fannie Lou Hamer said, you know what? I've decided right in the midst of this pain, if I'm going to die and fall, I'm only falling forward. I'll never fall backwards. A clear call. Mother Teresa found her calling in the midst of being among the poor and that's why she wrote, she said, the good you do today, people will often forget tomorrow, but do good anyway. Give the world the best you have, and it may never be enough, but give the world the best you have anyway, because in the final analysis, it's between you and God, and it was never between you and them anyway. Calling, clear calling. Calling that understands right now at your young lives, for the rest of your lives, the, the, the call is, if I can help somebody as I pass along the way, then your living will not be in vain. And not only do we need our collective tears and a clear call, lastly, in this moment, we need consecrated commitment. We got to persevere. We need undeniable determination. There's a scripture in Hebrews chapter 10. The people were thinking about turning back and going backwards, and Paul wrote to them in Hebrews chapter 10, and Mr. President, this scripture is quoted, was often quoted in the Civil Rights Movement when their houses were being burned down, or when somebody had just been beaten to a pulp, and they would stand there and look at them, and somebody would quote this scripture, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 39, we are not of those who shrink back unto destruction, but we are those who persevere until the salvation of the soul. 
Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. People with a consecrated commitment cannot accept stubborn realities that we know do not have to exist. Coretta Scott King, not a long time, but right after her husband was shot and murdered, was asked, Ms. King, what do you think about the violence towards your husband? And Coretta said, let me remind you, there's more than just the violence that happened to my husband. Starving a child is violence. Neglecting school children is violence. Stopping people's living wage is violence. Ghetto housing is violence. Ignoring health care is violence. Contempt for poverty is violence. And then she said, but there's one more form of violence, and that is an apathetic attitude that refuses to challenge all of the other forms of violence. And so in every age, God uses some people who refuse to be apathetic. And guess what? He's calling you now. He's calling you to be those who say, we are not of those who shrink back under destruction, but we are those who persevere into the salvation of the soul, for faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You now, he's calling to have a consecrated commitment, a refusal to allow us to go back. Right now, as God is calling you to be the somebody that says to the moderates, to the, those on the left, those on the right, whoever they are, we will not shrink back. To say to the politicians, the potentates, and any people who want to go back, we will not shrink back from love, truth, justice, mercy, hope, and fighting for what's right. That's what Paul said some years ago. And that's what we have to recognize, that God always needs somebody like you to do some soul salvation, to do some transformation on the inside. God uses people like you to help change the world and change the nation. You know, people often say the moment we're in is worse than we've ever seen. I wouldn't say that because we are in a place standing even on this ground where people came through slavery. Do you know in 2019, 2020, uh, 1919, 1920, 1921, what was going on then? The president was playing Birth of a Nation in the White House, a racist film. There was a pandemic and the president lied about it and got 600,000 people killed because he didn't tell the truth. And there were racial riots going all on all over the country. It was called Red Summer. But even if you go back further than that, around 1852, Frederick Douglass became depressed. You know, we talk about all the strong things. Let me talk about this in close. The Supreme Court had been stacked by slaveholders. Justice Taney was made the Chief Justice. His assignment was to ensure the eternal existence of slavery. And so in the Dred Scott decision, they decided, the Supreme Court, that black men and women had no rights for which white supremacy ever had to adhere to because they were property. And when that happened, it devastated Frederick Douglass. It broke his heart. It made him cry. And he had a speech to give, and he was sitting in an auditorium preparing, and he had his head in his hand. And Sojourner Truth looked over and she saw that her friend's soul wasn't right. He was thinking about shrinking back. He was thinking about giving up. He was hurt. The abolitionist was saying, that's it. We can't win. The courts are against us. The military is against us. The sheriffs are against us. The Congress is against us. The president is against us. That's it. But from afar across the hall, when Sojourner Truth saw her friend with his head in his hand, she hollered at him these words. Frederick is God dead. When Frederick heard those words, it did something to his soul. 
Frederick knew then that he couldn't shrink back. I come today to raise that same thing. Is God dead? Well, my faith says God is not dead. And if God is not dead, justice is not dead. I don't care what it looks like. If God is not dead, love is not dead. The possibility of health care for all is not dead. The possibility for living wages is not dead. Ending poverty is not dead. Dealing with racism is not dead. Ensuring housing for everybody is not dead. Ending war is not dead. Making sure our children are saved and lifted is not dead. Fixing the climate is not dead. Mercy is not dead. Justice is not dead. Love is not dead. Overcoming evil with good is not dead. If God is not dead, then possibility is not dead. So I say to this generation, you ought to pray with me. God, grant us wisdom. Grant us courage for the living of these days. God, give us faith. Give us courage. Enable us not to shrink back. I declare unto you, they told me 20 years ago, I'd never walk again. They told me I would be in a nursing home. But I said to the doctors, God is not dead. And if God is not dead, God's got work for this generation. If I was at my home church, I'd say, would somebody help me? Just say hallelujah. hallelujah. And stand on your feet. And tell your neighbor, neighbor, good is still alive. Love is still alive. Mercy is still alive. Possibility is still alive. Cry your tears. Accept your call. And make a commitment that as long as God is alive, you will fight for what's right until there's no longer any breath in your body. Awarding of degrees will begin. <laughs> All guests are asked to remain in their seats and keep the aisles clear during the awarding of the degrees. Please welcome Dr. Elaine Meyer Lee, Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs and Provost, and Dr. Erica Cam, Vice President for Student Affairs. Thank you so much, Reverend Dr. Barber, for those, that crucial challenge to all of us. I'm still working on the tears here. <laughs> President Devereaux, I have the honor to inform you that these candidates have fulfilled all the requirements for graduation, and in accordance with the recommendation of the faculty, they are presented for the degree of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Professional Studies. <laughs> by the authority of the state of Maryland <clears throat> vested in the trustees of Goucher College and by them delegated to me I confer upon all of you individually and collectively as the class of 2022 the degree of Bachelor's of Arts with all the rights, privileges and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Will the recipients for the degree of Bachelor of Arts come forward to receive their diplomas? Tara Ngozi Bland Abdullah Nri. Omo Shaisan Adebambe. Ezekiel Aguilar. Marcus Ajin. 
Angad Singh Aluwalia. <clears throat> Emerson Rylan An. Yazan Alasadi. Caroline Beth Altman. Joshua Michael Anderson. Magna cum laude. Quay Anderson, cum laude. Shelby Apostle. Justin Ariaga. Jada Iyanya Avery. Joran Avery. Eitan Avni Heller. Samson Bainbridge Sumakumlade. Kaylee Shane Benasik Sumakumlade. Ashley Corinne Barnes. Nija Amani Barnes Kumlaude. Daniela Vedan Cum Laude. Linus Avery Bergren. Michaela Bickler Cum Laude. Kayla Bins Magna Cum Laude. Charlotte Birnbaum Cum Laude. Andre Bisma. <laughs> Ellen Blazer. Nicole Charmella Blunt, cum laude. Sky Bonzel Shepherd. Derek Nagel Borowski, magna cum laude. Skylar Boyer. Jumaya Brandon. Devin Brashear, cum laude. Casey Braun. Alexander P. Brito. Anna Brown. Lauren Ashley Brown, summa cum laude. Ethan Semensky, Buckborough, magna cum laude. Safira Bullard. Woo! Derek Burnett, magna cum laude. Leora Fredel Boucher, magna cum laude. Allison Oriana Butterfield, summa cum laude. Matthew Campbell, cum laude. Astrid Chadro, cum laude. Jake Chadro, cum laude. Jasmine St. Clair. Joseph J. Clark. Alexandra Roxanne Coffin, summa cum laude. Alec Beecher Cole. Delaney Comerford. Nicole Lee Connaughton. Maura Olivia Connell, magna cum laude. Hannah Marielle Corbis, summa cum laude. Ava Marie Corelli. Sky Janae Cosby. 
Louis Grant Karimova. Karivo, my apologies. Caitlin Irma Cunningham, magna cum laude. Jamie Dam, cum laude. Jamila Tu Dow, cum laude. Alana Yvonne David, cum laude. Kyra Davis. Rachel Catherine Days. Carson Elizabeth Delmont, cum laude. Anise Dillon. Alexandra M. Giovanni, summa cum laude. Olivia Taylor Douglas. Joseph Drury, magna cum laude. Madison Diamond. Claire Murphy Edwards, summa cum laude. Adele Marianne Ehrman. Julie Eicholtz. Nora Elizabeth Ellis, summa cum laude. Lillian Ann Fernandez, summa cum laude. Alejandro Fernandez Imora, magna cum laude. <clears throat> Heidi Figueroa Pena. <laughs> Julia Maria Fiori. Grace Fishback, summa cum laude. <clears throat> Philemon Tewelda Fische. <laughs> Natalie Anna Fitch, cum laude. <laughs> Emily Flynn. <laughs> Tania A. Foster. Ashton Freeman. <clears throat> Leah Fukudo, cum laude. <laughs> Estefany Joanna Garcia Garibaldi. <laughs> Hannah Renee Garrett, magna cum laude. <laughs> Julia Gazzola. Magna cum laude. Are you Grant? Grant Reyes Gibson, cum laude. <clears throat> Dariana. Dariana Valeria Hirao Contreras. Joel Gladney. Abigail Goldstein, magna cum laude. Nadira Vyasa Gondal. Keegan Gore. Johannes Gray. Gianna Graziano. Luca Isabella Green. Raquel Lucia Guzman. Nicholas Braden Haynes, cum laude. Jared Joseph Halverson, cum laude. Alono Rose Hamlin. Lila Grace Hansen. Paige M. Harper. Tyler Nicole Harris. William Joseph Hartnett. Julia Noel Hayworth.
Caitlin Jamee Hayes Cum Laude. Sarah Ann Healy Cum Laude. Jared Heath. Alyssa Henderson. David Henry. Sydney Hirschberg, cum laude. Jabril Luce Howard, magna cum laude. Martha Grace Claire Howell. Rebecca Gittinet Hunegya. Cameron Antonio Isaacs. Morgan Jackson. Brianna Barbara Jones. Nina Joseph. Maya Khan, magna cum laude. Brian Kane. Sydney Rose Kavanaugh, summa cum laude. Grace Kelly, magna cum laude. William Patrick Kelly. Ava Kemp, summa cum laude. Karen Kim. Skylar Cooker. Okay, they didn't have you. Matthew Tuan Knudsen. Marcus Allen Kurt Magnusum Laude. I'm um, excuse me, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Elizabeth Lacourt Ruiz. Zachary Robert LaFayre, magna cum laude. Tisva Haley Lawrence, magna cum laude. Tien Lee, magna cum laude. Emma Catherine LeBeau. Jordan Demetrius Lewis. Ma Katharina Isabel Lebanon Libit, Magna Cum Laude. Andrew Liss, Cum Laude. Ryan Scott Luke. Taylor Elizabeth Mace. Jacqueline. Hizamar Machado Contreras, cum laude. Duncan Andrew McIntyre. Donato Marshall, cum laude. Crystal Amanda Matthews, summa cum laude. Madison Matheson. Allison Lee McConnell. Elena McFadden. Abigail Grace McCarran. Jessica McKinney. Mary Rose McFeely, summa cum laude. Yeah, Avery Elizabeth Measley. Yeah. Kaya Victoria Mayalani Melchor, cum laude. Yeah. Chloe Michelson, magna cum laude. Yeah. 
Maya Miller, cum laude. Kelsey Grace Morrison, magna cum laude. Layla Jade Murray, magna cum laude. Demaya Denise Myrick. Mackenzie Ann Nace. Bella Nelkin Paperno, cum laude. Chang Yi Ung. Christine Nguyen, summa cum laude. Wen Wen, magna cum laude. Laura Ann Noriega. Sarah Ohana. Samuel Unuma. Leah Khan Oren. Sarah Elizabeth Owen. Sienna Jenya Paley. Cum laude. Kendall Nathan Parker. Alyssa Nicole Parkinson. Jackson Lee Penner. Mercy Grace Perez, magna cum laude. Malena? Yeah. Malena Beatrice Pimentel Herrera. Jacob Octavio Pinedo. Alec William Poblance. Emily Morgan Postalweight, summa cum laude. Sophia Leon Rago, magna cum laude. Zana Niangola Radanto. Jonathan D. Rasmussen, summa cum laude. Joseph B. Reisberg, summa cum laude. Carson Elizabeth Rettig, cum laude. Ani F. Reyes Rosario. Henry Fleming Robbins. Jamie Roche, summa cum laude. <laughs> Natalia Andrea Romero Torres, magna cum laude. <laughs> Sylvie Rude, Sylvie, uh, say the first. Sylvie Saravasan Rude. <laughs> Carlin Ray Rosenbaum, summa cum laude. <laughs> Anapala Rusipilosi? Rospigliosi. I was close. <laughs> Milo Roth, magna cum laude. <laughs> Olivia Hayes Roy. Brady River Rubenstein, magna cum laude. Nadine Sam. Matthew Robert Sanders, summa cum laude. Emma Saar. Matthew Khan Savin, summa cum laude. Ellie Seguin. 
Lily Schaefer, cum laude. Campbell, Campbell Ian Shepard. Kaya Shula, magna cum laude. Barissa Bass Schumann Fletcher, cum laude. Jillian Sickler. Victoria Ashley Siegel. Joseph Gerard Cersei. Cersei, cum laude. Sydney Smith. Ayana Trinity, Simone Solomon, summa cum laude. <laughs> Helena G. Solomon, cum laude. <laughs> Nodar Sotkalava, magna cum laude. <laughs> Leah McIntosh Shore, summa cum laude. Jonathan Phillips Spencer. Aiden Thomas Spore. Samuel Stash Hour, cum laude. Alexander Steets, summa cum laude. Ready? There you go. Hal Stewart, magna cum laude. <laughs> Jessica Lauren Stoopy, magna cum laude. <laughs> Flannery Scott Suppley. <laughs> Sean Swanson. I want to make sure. Alexis Skoltek, summa cum laude. But Batanya Tedessa. Gabriela. Gabriela Tasuda, summa cum laude. Hallie Elizabeth Coyne Taylor. Maya Morrison Taylor, cum laude. <laughs> Fuang Le Nam Tai, magna cum laude. <laughs> Kayla Opal Thomas. <laughs> Natalia Torres. <laughs> Rebecca Torres Granados. Michaela Aida Roser Trainer. Yeah. Ni Yen Tran. Summa cum laude. Prisanthi Thanai Simpikani. Magna cum laude. Carlos Ugiles. <laughs> Stephen Thomas Van Riper, cum laude. Deanny Alexandra Velasco. Kaya Venable. Hannah Washburn, summa cum laude. Emily Rachel Wasco, summa cum laude. Zachary Wenick. Audrey Wenzel. Tristan Corvid Whalen Cum Laude. Calvin White. Berea Natalie Whitley. 
Mia Christina Wiggins, cum laude. Maya Ray Williams. Anise Denai Williams. Denai. Michael Henry Wink. Maya? Maya Wittenberg. Leah Wadajo. Melvin Stanley Yates the third. Autumn Young. Jacob Thomas Younger. The awarding of the graduate degrees will begin. Please welcome Dr. Annalisa Chachulin, Director of the Center of Education and Director of the Master of Arts in the Welsh Center for Graduate and Professional Studies. Mr. President, I have the honor to inform you that these candidates have fulfilled all of the requirements for graduation and in accordance with the recommendation of the faculty, they are presented for the following master degrees. Master of Arts in Arts Administration. Master of Arts in Cultural Sustainability. Master of Arts in Historic Preservation. Master of Arts in Teaching. Master of Education. Master of Fine Arts in Art and Technology. Master of Fine Arts in Nonfiction. Master of Science in Higher Education, Policy, Research, and Administration, Postmaster Certificate in Historical Preservation. By the authority of the State of Maryland, vested in the trustees of Goucher College, and by them delegated to me, I confer upon all you graduate students, individually and collectively, as the class of 2022, these respective degrees with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Candidates will receive their diplomas in alphabetical order, but are listed in the program by their degrees. Will the recipients of the Welch Center for Graduate and Professional Studies degrees come forward to receive their diplomas? Alesa Achike. Kimberly Ahern. Jessica Allen. Allison Grace Beyer. Royal Banks. Michelle Cassidy Berry. Stephanie Batchelder, Linda Battle, <laughs> Kathleen Brockway, Andrew Berlin. Ryan Bussink. Morgan Cheatham. Derek Cole. Matthew Thomas D'Agostino. D'Angela Dixon. Oh, you're right, man. I can put you in. Deasia Ellis. Yeah. 
Candice Marika Everett, Marcia Everett. <laughs> Melissa Fiorentino. <laughs> Catherine Morgan Fitch. <laughs> Jamonique Fletcher. Jamonique Fletcher. <laughs> Gaston Alberto Gamez. Lacey Joanna Harold. <laughs> Hillary Suzanne Heck. <laughs> Chelsea Marie Hare. <laughs> Drew L. Hinton. Kamar Hopkins. <laughs> Kennedy Ikubu. <laughs> Jan Yelichka. <laughs> Sarah Ella Emily Carlson. Monica Coors. Christina Karenstra. Kendall Kosman. Mallory Chris Christofferson. Alyssa Bell Booyer. <laughs> Mallory Chris Christofferson. <laughs> Brittany Sierra Lang. <laughs> Jenny Carvajal Lares. Ling Yu Luo. Chantris Hester Sadie Mack. Carly Miller. Haley Miller. Kelsey Moreland. Jacqueline Muse. <laughs> Megan Knoll. <laughs> Adriana Nunez. <laughs> Maria Gabriel Añate. Deborah Lynn Postles. Myrell Redmond. Grace Hannah Shipman. Brandon J. Shorts. Cassidy Stewart. <laughs> Mallory Tenore Tarplay. <laughs> Samantha Joe Smith. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm going to cry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Gail F. Beltran Travis. Shauna 
Jermaine Webb. <laughs> Jessica White. <laughs> Kevin Wisniewski. Well, with the finish of co conferring all of the d degrees, I hope everyone will please join me now in congratulating the entire class of 2022 <laughs> undergraduates and graduates. the Reverend has pointed out, the sun came out exactly when you graduated. So a little calm before the storm, but we want to proceed one change. We're not going to have the choir sing at the end of the performance because the note I've just been handed is that we need to wrap up to make sure that we get everybody in doors at the end of the ceremony and avoid a, a thunderstorm in Deluge uh, in about a half an hour. So we'll keep proceeding. At this point, as we move into the final stages, I would like to introduce Damon Highsmith, class of tw 2003, the president of the alumni and alumni Goucher College Association, your alumni association. Damon? Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Damon Highsmith, uh, president of the AAGC, class of 2003. And uh, as President Devereaux just mentioned, the sun is out now, but it won't be for long. So I've been asked to keep my remarks very brief. So I'm abandoning the prepared remarks and simply going to ask the class of 22 to please stand. It is my honor to induct you into the Alumni and Alumni Association of Goucher College, your alumni association. You may now turn your tassels from right to left. Congratulations. You may be seated. And I'll just point out a very historical, a historical fact that we only learned recently. The Goucher College was the first college of where the tradition of turning from the, the tassel from the right to the left began in 1904. So it was here at Goucher College. You are part of a long line of innovators and leaders. And so even little traditions like that, they start somewhere and they started here. So to all of you graduates of the class of 2022, from all of us at Goucher, an affectionate farewell. We look forward to hearing of your accomplishments, both the personal and professional, as you make us all Goucher proud. And we look forward to seeing you on your next visit to campus. So let me introduce our chaplain, Reverend Maba Jonas, to lead us in a closing benediction. And I would request that as the po podium party and the graduates leave, would everyone else please remain seated so we can uh, exit orderly out of here. We're going to depart with many of the after 
uh, outdoor after gatherings that have been designated previously. Um, because in about a half an hour, like I said, we'll have a, a downpour. So we want to make sure everybody gets inside or can gr gather with people uh, safely out of the rain. So graduates, um, family members and guests, please um, welcome Chaplain Maba Jonas to the podium. Congratulations, class of 2022. I will keep it brief. I would like to just thank our commencement speaker, Reverend Dr. William Barber, once more and say, we will see you in DC on June 18th. The benediction is the final blessing offered as the traditional closing to a ceremony. It is my honor as chaplain of the college to offer you as this final blessing. If you will please rise as you are able. Holy One, God of many names, as we prepare to depart from this momentous celebration, now as graduates of this esteemed institution, we look to the future with hope and defiance, with love and compassion for the poor and marginalized, with our eyes towards justice, our minds toward intellect, and our hearts filled with the promise of what tomorrow brings. Bless the staff, faculty, administrators who have made this day possible. Bless the family and friends who are here and beyond. Bless this campus and all who will follow in your footsteps. And bless these graduates that they may feel the pride and conviction of what they have accomplished. Friends, the future is now. The responsibility is yours. The dream will become your reality. As President Devereaux said, as the Goucher Shield commands, prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. You are what is good about Goucher College. Go forth and prove it. Amen. You may be seated.